Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. After a hiatus of a few months, we have the pleasure of Sri T G Mohandas, President of VHS Kerala, amidst us. Mohandas ji, namaskaram and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaste to you and all your viewers. Uh, Mohandas ji, um, this topic that we are going to talk about, gold smuggling in God's own country. is something that has been in the news recently with the arrest of some people and uh, you know uh, all the connections that this uh, person supposedly has with the uh, political leadership cutting across party lines now the interesting thing about this is i have noticed that there has been a sprout of gold jewelers from kerala and i'll give you a quick run down on the number of names that i have seen there could be some inaccuracies but the numbers are truly uh, mind blowing josco jewelers joy alukas jose alukas alukas bima customs semmanur malabar gold and diamonds alphabet kalyan manapuram kerala jewelers original kerala jewelers prince jewelry i can go on and on so there is a lot of jewelry shop the jewelry companies they have showrooms in many states now you are big, beginning to see this spread quite a bit now for 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 kerala to be the source of so much gold kerala doesn't have a gold mine so clearly it's coming from somewhere so perhaps you can walk us through this fascination of gold and 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 uh, india is one of the highest consumers of gold so this gold is coming from mines in south africa in in africa and it finds its way through dubai and then it gets smuggled into india that is the normal uh, path but the economics of it why suddenly this is happening or is it something new or has it been happening over a period of time so you can take it away and perhaps exp express your thoughts on what you see about this whole gold smuggling into god's own country no see uh, gold smuggling was there historically ever since the gold import was made duty they apply customs duty and now gst and some educational says so many things are there and you know for importing gold the present rate of customs duty is 36.5% nothing else is taxed like this except probably for uh, liquor now so gold import uh, 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 is can be done authoritatively by declaring your gold even you can book the gold in uh, gulf countries uh, and pay the money there uh, so that you can draw equivalent gold from state bank of india here that is the way it should be done legally but then your margins will be too low but if you smuggle gold you get almost 100% margin now the recent latest haul of gold of uh, 30 kg they spent around 8 uh, 8 uh, crores in uh, dubai and they got almost 15 crores here that means double them now anybody will have a tendency to double his money uh, uh, within 3 or 3 and a half hours of flight from dubai to trivandrum this is what is happening when it is profitable whatever you do how much be the penalty how big or cruel could be the punishment or whatever be the hassles people will uh, if money is there people will somehow see that it is done this nature has uh, led to uh, gold smuggling now in between if i remember properly if i am wrong you can correct me or some of my viewers can correct me during narasimha rao's period the duty of the gold was drastically brought down so that uh, smuggling was almost nil or negligent the only way to stop smuggling is to reduce the duty now this uh, idea was uh, of course floated by dr subramanian swami but unfortunately as usually happens nobody took uh, his suggestion seriously he said uh, see this is uh, seriously jeopardizing you are increasing your duty to prevent uh, smuggling 
that is a foolish thing if you increase duty the profit margin because of the smuggling goes up and even ordinary people will take the risk of uh, smuggling gold because money is something people need perpetually so the best way is reduce your uh, duty so that uh, people will bring it legitimately and they will pay the duty also the same logic dr swami applied in income tax also you know during narasimha rao's period in uh, lok sabha there was a question that you get uh, 2% of your taxes from uh, personal income tax how much you are spending and the finance minister the then finance minister manmohan singh gave an answer that i am spending 4% to realize this 2% so ultimately it is a loss of 2% to the government but then everybody asked then why why are you doing this then manmohan said i am uh, getting liquid cash from this middle class people who are honest tax payers i can squeeze them and i am getting cash i go to big industrialists they go to high court they get a stay they go to some tribunal they get a stay and it is very difficult to realize that money but these people they are uh, working getting a salary and it is easy for you to deduct it from the salary and then give balance money to the man so he doesn't have any appeal uh, he, he cannot approach a court yeah tell me so i i am reminded of two phrases to define the middle class indian yeah, these are two phrases in tamil and i'll try to translate it into other to english one is emanda sonagiri the other is ilichavayan that means these people have no choice they are being taken for a ride by the government because they can do so because most of them are rule abiding law abiding fearful god fearing people who you know don't mind uh, trying uh, you know getting their paycheck completely in white i mean imagine if uh, a, a big uh, uh, mnc starts saying okay i i give you in gold i give you salary in gold <laughs> nothing wrong in that <laughs> then this this whole thing is going to fall through the crack so my point here is excessive excessive taxation always leads us into other problems so please continue your uh, thought i'm going to go and show uh, our viewers ways in which gold is being smuggled and it will take your breath away but please finish your thought and then we'll go to that segment yeah this time what happened was he uh, 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 the no um, we have a problem of normal smuggling but this time the diplomatic channel was used to smuggle gold so that it is not uh, checked at all now diplomatic baggage is a privilege every nation is having with respect to the other nation friendly nation so that uh, you cannot open or check their baggage but uh, ever since the emergence of uh, x ray and other uh, devices to see the uh, what is inside the baggage without opening it customs also was using the uh, x ray method but then that is why they cannot distinguish between iron copper and gold because they oxidize gold and uh, do some some small chemical change uh, there is uh, yes so you can see viewers now on the screen how they have uh, hidden the gold in the place where your pant has the uh, belt where it holds the belt the thing the gold has been oxidized powdered and then put in a cellophane uh, wrapper and that snugly fits into that compartment and then somebody has stitched it back together so every pant that this person is carrying has this gold in it and and this is not the embass uh, the diplomatic pouch this is day to day because the 30 kilos that we talked about is probably a one in, one off instance this is been going on for a long time and and it cannot be without the knowledge of some of the people in customs so be that as it may i just wanted to show you that this is an innovative way in which they are smuggling gold so please continue Ah, yeah, I R G. When all this halagula uh, um, on uh, 30 kg of uh, 
say diplomatic goal you know uh, what happened in uh, trivandrum airport day before yesterday they caught hold of uh, two or three ladies who were uh, wearing gold inside sanitary napkins and uh, <laughs> that is unimaginable now since you have shown the belt side of the pan there is much more inside they bring gold inside uh, sanitary napkin also very minute granules of gold were stuffed inside uh, sanitary napkin and uh, it was caught because it is not a high profile thing the people caught were not have at least uh, uh, by report they were not having any high connections it didn't become a big news uh, after catching 30 kg of gold uh the next day 1.5 kg was caught in kochi 600 grams were uh, caught in uh, kalikar kolikode airport it is a regular affair uh, in kerala because all these jewelers they need gold if somebody else is smuggling for me i am the happiest man i have no risk i can pay him uh, by cash now the spurt of uh, gold smuggling why did it happen that is because of the demonetization previously you might remember in kerala container loads of currency notes was coming and hence my now it is not possible you see 30 kg of gold is costing around uh, 15 approximate 15 16 crores now 15 16 crores of rupees in 500 notes the baggage will be too huge for them to smuggle that is why they have reverted back to gold previously uh, they were smuggling gold as well as uh, fake currency from pakistan which was routed through uh, gulf country and this uh, this particular uh, diplomatic bag generally we call it diplomatic bag but uh, it need not necessarily be a bag it can be a big box or a leather bag or a suitcase or even a cupboard so that is how uh, everything is called diplomatic bag and you put a sticker on that saying it is diplomatic bag so on june 30 an emirates flight from uh, dubai landed in trivandrum with uh, diplomatic baggage also initially the customs thought it is uh, diplomatic baggage but while going through they found that lot of uh, uh, domestic uh, things are there inside the bag like uh, door closer some small utensils etc which uh, they had a serious doubt that uh, it is available in trivandrum why the consulate should import it from dubai okay they are getting free from dubai but the cost is not much that you import it from there and use it here etc so they smell foul they inform the uh, external affairs ministry because they are not authorized to open the box uh without the permission of uh, uae authorities they contacted the foreign ministry contacted uae and the condition is that you can open box uh, in uh, in two uh, cases one thing the sender uae should allow you okay open and inspect it number two the uae disowns the box no we have not sent such a box at all so it is up to you whether to open it or not so in this case the second thing happened uae gave an immediate reply saying that we have not at all sent such a consignment in uh, customs bag that means it is a problem with uh, uh, the customs itself so then the box was opened and uh, rest is history now this diplomatic immunity is uh, if i can take few minutes there was <laughs> diplomatic immunity was used to transport even people you know through big boxes in 1983 uh, in nigeria there was a military coup and the ruling uh, minister he was transport minister not prime minister the ruling minister uh, sought uh, asylum in uh, political asylum in england he was the transport minister and he was accused of uh, fleecing billions of dollars from nigeria so he escaped to england now nigerian military want him uh, back desperately they took help from israel because only israel can do wonders in uh, 
this type of situations unfortunately india does not understand the potential of uh, israel again i must remember dr swami who was always advocating friendship with israel uh, in uh, the first embassy of israel was opened in dr swami's residence unofficially and then it was made official that is israel so nigeria took help from israel israel said uh, uh, let us catch him in uh, england and then give him some sedative pack him in a diplomatic bag and send in a flight to nigeria and then israel doctor was willing to carry oxygen cylinder etc uh, in another box so this uh, minister was caught his uh, name is uh, umaru diko you can uh, search in google umaru diko umaru diko was caught in a shopping mall then he was uh, given a sedative injection he fell unconscious he was packed up in a box in another box uh, israeli doctor anesthetist he was also packed with oxygen cylinder etc so that inside the cargo flight he will connect oxygen tube to umaru diko so that umaru diko survives the flight the distance but at the last moment uh, uh, scotland yard police sent a message everywhere that uh, a political asylum seeker minister from nigeria is missing so find him out if it is there in their if he is there in their boat so one customs officer of england had a doubt that uh, why are these two big boxes going to nigeria let us open that. then uh, there was problem they opened the box and they found umar rodi ko unconscious and the doctor was well conscious and they were arrested this is the level of diplomatic immunity given to the boxes which are flying from england and you know england give asylum to all sorts of crooks corrupt people all uh, <laughs> this uh, your vijay malya uh, choksi uh, nirav modi Every, everybody seeks asylum first in england and then they go to some independent island somewhere or small country like burkina faso or something so england is the hub of all this uh, uh, anti uh, uh, national activities for other countries and they are hosting every political asylum seeker anyway that is part of history i just wanted to uh, inform the viewers that the level of diplomatic uh, immunity is so huge that in 2015 a uac um, uae embassy official came from singapore and landed up in delhi with 37 kg of gold ornaments it is not smuggling it was his luggage he declared it it is my personal luggage 37 kg worth of gold ornaments you cannot touch it because i am a diplomat and he had an indian friend the indian friend was arrested and you a diplomat was sent back because according to diplomatic rules you cannot punish you cannot put him in jail nothing can be done today you see the uh, trivandrum consulate uae consulate attache he just uh, went back to uae because he cannot be touched by even by any none of our country's rule apply to them no law is applying to them unless it is permitted by uae otherwise they are free they can move you cannot prevent them now there is big hala gula going on in tv studios whether he could have prevented no he could not have prevented because for preventing him you need permission from uae for giving a permission uae needs clear evidence from you now you see with all said and done nia has arrested so many people they said it is their allegation which is raised in their fir and it is with the kerala high court also they said that the money out of this smuggling is used for terrorist activity okay that is all what we know with terrorist activity was there some explosion plan was it inside kerala or outside kerala all these details have to come out it may be there with customs and nia but it has not come out uh, in the public domain so we don't know what is in store for us but now the funny part is the role of kerala administered in this keeping politics apart you see one lady is the kingpin in this uh, smuggling 
which uh, customs is sure nai is sure that lady was arrested from bangalore this much is also true now how did this lady travel to bangalore is a mystery because you know this news came out though it was uh, identified baggage was identified on june 3rd it was opened on june uh, i mean june 30th uh, it came july 3rd it was opened july 5th evening the news was out that uh, uh, this gold has been caught and somebody from chief minister's office is trying to influence the customs this was the news the news was broken by congress channel but all congress leaders other media were silent on 6th newspaper started reporting as if it is a normal smuggling and 7th again all hell broke loose uh, then they said uh, there is one swapna she is working in it department of kerala and she is directly connected to chief minister etc etc all photographs everything started to come out now everything almost everything is in public now how this swapna could escape to bangalore because if you see the sequence of events one fine morning uh, the devasam minister uh, surendra he says that uh, we are sitting on a volcano everybody thought that uh, volcano means the corona volcano i don't know corona acting like a volcano it is just uh, exploding and spreading everywhere anyway his uh, uh, his comparison was very wrong but then what he intended was today the news will come out about so it was his intent now everybody got the win and they declared a triple lockdown in uh, trivandrum city triple lockdown means there will be only one road which will lead to trivandrum only one one approach will be there to trivandrum which can be used either by military police or health department no ordinary citizen or any other government official can travel through that road all other roads are sealed this is called triple lockdown all shops are closed everything is closed and you know swapna is coming out of trivandrum and traveling to bangalore they say she traveled on 5th day um, 6th 7th 10th 11th whatever with the day the triple lockdown is still prevailing in uh, trivandrum city you cannot enter trivandrum city except through one road showing some emergency that is the situation now how swapna uh, escape now number 2 the government was so sluggish that it took them almost 48 hours to say that swapna is not our employee she is employee of our subcontract we gave a contract some it contract that was uh, subcontracted to someone else and that someone else employed this swapna for saying this they took almost 48 hours now a chief minister who is home minister also can the moment the news is flat he can ask his uh, private secretary or chief secretary that i need information about this swapna within 15 minutes it should reach me who is she? that is the way a chief minister and home minister works and pudrai vijayan also might have worked like this but he didn't say it. next day when there was a press conference next day evening that means almost after 24 hours he said uh, you are asking me about a lady who i don't know i'll find out and tell you tomorrow that was his answer but next day people knew who is she now they now the third day came the story that she is not a government employee now irt you tell me and the viewers probably um, hundreds of viewers are watching this you tell me is it not easy in your computer to delete an employee make another uh, some vision tech or technologies some other name put this employee's name there show his salary there everything is possible even a, 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 a student of computer like me i know how it is done you can remove it once for all you can delete it and create also and they create a mistake also somebody says she is employee of uh, vision tech 
somebody says vision technology somebody says vision tech is etc because in in hari bari they typed various names at various places and all these documents have come out and na is laughing <laughs> because uh, this type of uh, poor uh, coverage given anyway uh, that is the situation now uh, they found out that swapna is close close associate of the it secretary who happens to be the principal secretary of uh, chief minister now chief minister has two principal secretaries one is mr senthil other is mr shivashan now senthil is silent no complaint against senthil shivashankar is really the close man of uh, punarai vijayan the chief minister why because you know two months back there was a controversy on an american company called sprinkler yes the data of total kerala was fed to sprinkler for some research or something and the contract was given by shivashankar without consulting the law department finance department nothing he just issued an order to an overseas company and the chief minister protected him chief minister said uh, nothing wrong he is authorized to issue that order there is nothing wrong no corruption nothing is there and in uh, the high court they said the contract was given but uh, now we feel that the contract is not required so we have cancelled the contract so the case become infractious high court said uh, since there is no contract existing now let us close the case that is how he was uh, saved by chief minister now what happened this uh, shivashankar was a regular visitor of uh, swapna in her flat nothing wrong in that anybody can visit anybody regularly or irregularly for any personal purpose whatsoever we are not interested in that. but it so happened that swapna is the kingpin and shivashankar happened to be the all powerful it secretary then the relation goes beyond that did swapna use her connection with the uh, shivashankar for uh, smuggling did shivashankar knowingly or unknowingly became an abettor of uh, smuggling sometimes it could be unknowingly also because the people residing in the nearby flat they say that uh, um swapna and shivashankar they didn't name anybody but they said uh, so many people uh, in a drunken condition come to the flat in the night they leave in the night sometimes they leave in the morning sometimes they come in state cars with the uh, removed uh, this there is a banner on the state car everywhere a red banner it will be kerala state that will be removed but still from the number you can uh, understand that uh, it is a state car so this was uh, corroborated by the the people who are staying in the flat so uh, punarai was in uh, suit he asked uh, shivashankar to go on leave and he said uh, you see i have removed it it is not removed he applied for a leave and punarai granted now today just uh, two hours back i understand shivashankar is being suspended i don't know for what because the report is not yet uh, made public they say that chief secretary made some inquiry and shivashankar is uh, suspended and you know how shivashankar got this ias he didn't write in a examination there is a uh, provision of fund for in ias on senior officers uh so shivashankar was conferred uh, conferred ias when punrai vijayan was electricity minister so um, when was uh, this uh, ias conferred uh, 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 this ias was confirmed uh, conferred somewhere around uh, 2000 when uh, nayanar was chief minister and pinarayi was uh, electricity minister uh, and i nothing wrong in conferring ias but uh, shivashankar was not eligible uh, 15 people were to be interviewed according to their uh, criteria shivashankar was 17 one uh, ias uh, collector was suspended for some frivolous reasons so that shivashankar became became 16 and then one fellow was bypassed and shivashankar's name was sent to the center 
and then uh, government has to approve it because the list has basically come from the state and uh, control uh, control i is uh, i don't say anything wrong in this but there is a connection i suspect a connection between shivashankar and uh, punarai vijayan uh, for the past 20 25 years at least they are very very close to each other that is what uh, leads me to boldly say that punarai vijayan has got some role in this some role in this. point number 2 i will say start from the demonetization cbm created a big uh, big problem in kerala over demonetization including vinay vijayan he was chief minister still he addressed a huge gathering in front of uh, reserve bank of india trivandrum branch there is a huge space also in front of that office now what was their demand i thought they are going to demand uh, that sufficient notes may be available in uh, atm people are getting killed you know so many stories were flashed in this but it, that was not their demand their demand was that the cooperative banks in kerala should be given the power to change the currency you give old notes syndicate bank kerala bank state bank of india dhanalakshmi bank everybody will convert it to new notes and give you back only thing you have to declare that and probably income tax will ask you the source so so you will tell the those oh, this is my i got provident fund my gratuity my this income my that income your normal income tax declaration that would have been sufficient but uh, there are uh, more than uh, 11000 cooperative societies in kerala out of which uh, i understand almost uh, 7 to 8000 are cooperative banks small small banks but having huge deposits by cbn members all are benami deposits and uh, their cash cbn is parking their cash in these cooperative banks now what happened was suddenly uh, modi demonetized the 1000 rupees note so it was reported at that time uh, unconfirmed sources reported that CPM lost around 800 crores of uh, currency during the demonetization. That is why CPM was furious. Sitaram Yachuri was uh, upset. Everybody was upset because they lost uh, money worth around the uh, 800 crores. That was uh, a social media news at that time. Mainstream media didn't touch because CPM is uh, all powerful in Kerala. But the RBI refused. RBI said that you are not coming under us. We don't recognize you. You are as good as an uh, individual for us. So you can only change uh, uh, for the four thousand rupees per week, not more than that. So that was uh, what RBI said. These people went to High Court. High Court didn't uh, entertain the petition. So the money was lost. Now the money is to be made up. and how to make it in the courts very fast because you have lost it and it is almost 3 years now you lost the money the best way is to uh, bring gold uh, if you bring uh, as i told you uh, at the start you cannot bring, bring 500 rupees uh, fake currency from somewhere it is not going to work you know how much uh, 500 rupee notes are required for it in the courts it will be a huge uh, ship load of uh, notes which cannot be handled now the only way is gold so for these two reasons specifically one thing vinay vijayan suspected association with uh, shivashankar who is closely associated with swapna that is one reason number two the laws due to demonetization which uh, any anybody will uh, will uh, feel very badly using eight and a crores is not a job for a political party so definitely they have tried this route number 3 you know there was a corruption case on punarai uh, vijayan uh, in that level in canadian company now that corruption case is uh, finally in the supreme court it is yet to come for uh, hearing 
and during some period the shivashankar was made uh, chairman of uh, chairman and managing director of electricity board so he could have uh, manipulated papers he could have inserted papers in file he could have removed from file so that finally when it comes to supreme court they will say that no such record is available once the record is lost a corruption case will lose because you need evidence so tampering with the evidence might have been done by shivan garai suspect for to drive so for these three reasons that was case which shivan garai was conferred ias during surveillance period his uh, shivan garai's association with swapna and shivan garai's association with the uh, drivian this demonetization all these factors raise serious doubts on the drivian's uh, involvement in this matter this is the core issue in this matter now smuggling is taking place day and night yeah tell me so um viewers uh, while uh, i have sri mohan das ji uh, get himself a uh, headset um i just wanted to bring you up to date on a few other things that are happening this uh, this person how she was caught in bengaluru when there was lockdown in trivandrum is a story in itself and at some time in the future perhaps uh, mohandas ji and i will talk about this how somebody who is not supposed to be moving around suddenly manages to straddle uh, you know to get to karnataka you have to go through a fair amount of distance not only on the side of kerala but also on the side of karnataka there's an entry point too and and somebody managed to grease the wheels karnataka is run by uh, bjp and um, we don't know if she even traveled through tamil nadu which is run by admk so you now see that in such cases whichever party is in power it seems like there is an alternate channel to ease the communication to so let me just finish the thought so um, as sri mohandas ji said that demonetization through a curve ball and you can see this cooperative banks fracas was not just in kerala it also happened in maharashtra because if you look at sri sharad pawar ji statements around that time one day he supports it then he comes to know that cooperative banks uh, cannot transfer their money and then he is against it and then he goes and meets mr modi and then something happens it looks like some cooperative banks were allowed very 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 funny business there so whatever be the intent of demonetization because of all this backroom dealings some of it in fact quite a bit of it got diluted and i think india is back where it started because now we are again seeing 2000 rupee notes being counterfeited so the best way to do this is phase out 2000 phase out 1000 phase out 500 just have 200 this is going to be a big 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 step and the idea is you encourage people to use credit cards you encourage people to use bank accounts do online transaction because that's the only way you know gold should be bought or any high net worth should be bought so i'll stop my uh, uh, pravachan for now so mohandas ji please continue i hope our uh, your audio is improved now Ah yes, I can uh, clearly hear you now. Okay. Now I'll make a small uh, amendment to what you said down cooperative banks. Yeah. Nothing happened in cooperative banks because the Reserve Bank was uh, uh, non-challenged. They they said nothing doing. We don't recognize these banks. The power to issue new notes or convert the old notes cannot be given to cooperative banks. That was their stance. and somehow they stood all uh, political pressure because even uh, prime minister understood the ramifications once you agree to that uh, across uh, india uh, the whole demonetization will uh, collapse like a pack of cards because every politician of almost every party probably including uh, prime minister's own party was practically owning cooperative bank you know there will be a committee 
but the whole committee is uh, either cpm or congress or uh, janta dal or nationalist congress something like that so you have a total control over that uh, so that uh, could not have been agreed to now last week what happened is with one notification reserve bank of india took over all kerala cooperative banks under them and issued a, uh, a notice to every cooperative bank saying that fall in line work according to rbi norms now we have uh, recognized you but work according to our norms now working according to rbi norms means you have to put a professional manager you cannot have this committee system in which all politicians take part they decide whom to be uh, given loan with, with or without uh, collateral security all this nonsense is vanished because till now cooperative banks were coming under nabard national agricultural rural development bank that was a separate parallel setup which was no never ever recognized by rbi now rbi said we recognize you but you have to run the bank according to our uh, rules this is a yes or no case now i cooperative banks in kerala can either shut their business or work according to rbi principle this is uh, one good thing which was done by uh, prime minister number 2 uh, this uh, printing fake notes uh, of 2000 counterfeit notes now in kerala for some reason the 2000 uh, uh, currency is slowly vanishing from atms you go to atm for the past uh, at least 4 months i did not touch any 2000 note any 2000 note in any of the atm even before uh, this corona issue started you know i was uh, extensively traveling always traveling within kerala and outside kerala also always used to draw money from uh, bank but uh, yes viewers those of you who are alert who heard the people who were talking about demonetization one of those special persons i will not mention that person's name here had accidentally set the let the cat out of the bag saying that 2000 rupees will be slowly phased out this was in 2016 by the way now those of you who heard that person speak if you can remember your memory if your memory is very clear you will know who i am talking about so what you are seeing now in the atms is not at all surprising to me sarji this is this is another way to do it this is also a demonetization this is another way yes. to try and take it out by taking it out see what happens is quietly phasing it out you are posing a challenge to the counterfeiters they don't know you know so so if 2000 is off limit then they don't know well if i do 1000 by the time i'm done getting it to a point where it is good enough to pass off as the real thing will they face that one out also so now india is being very smart about this they don't have to make you know full page announcement saying that i'm phasing this out i'm phasing this out but you can slowly reduce the higher value currency in circulation so that is possible but the only catch in that is while you are bringing something down you have to bring something else up so for every 2000 you phase out you would have to bring 10 200s same to same value you you see so that is the challenge in front of the government but be that as it may i'm glad that uh, in a way you are not seeing the 2000s uh, at the atm sir please continue yeah uh, this was also again this phenomena was uh, predicted by dr subramanian swami uh, i asked him uh, one day during this uh, de uh, demonetization period sir what is going to happen where is the equivalent currency you have withdrawn the currency the equivalent currency is to be there then he said mondas uh, printing equivalent currency and keeping it ready will be a foolish act because you cannot print the equivalent currency stack it and one day announce demonetization and start uh, distributing this currency because uh, it will it is huge money worth lakhs of crores uh, so there has to be billions of currency notes to be printed so it's going to take time 
till that time there will be cash starved uh, markets and um, middle class people like you may suffer a little because you don't get the currency for your purpose now start using the plastic money cards etc bear with the nation so that they slowly uh, print currency and augment the reserves now what i feel is that uh, he told me the right thing now almost uh, 500 uh, rupee note has become very common to number of 200 is less but it is slowly increasing number of 100 is also increasing and proportionately the old 100 rupee note which was little big that is also being slowly withdrawn because you remember during demonetization they used the old rand discarded 100 rupee notes they put it into circulation back so we were getting all old notes from atms people were unhappy are ye kya puna raj purana cheez dete ho so that was a limitation of rbi because they cannot uh, pump in that much uh, currency to the market so they were forced to use part of the old discarded currency which is not absolutely damaged now they are withdrawing slowly they are withdrawing the old currency also so 2000 is being withdrawn 100 is being withdrawn 500 is being replaced uh, 500 is being re- um, i mean augmented and 100 notes also being augmented along with 200 which was not pre existing before uh, demonetization there was no 200 note 200 came into circulation after demonetization so this is being done almost uh, clearly and you know corona has given a good chance to every government not only modi including pirai vijayan every state government and the governments throughout the world they are getting a golden chance to discipline people and do whatever they want now you see because of corona you cannot uh, conduct a protest match, march against uh, pirai vijayan nothing can be done the fuel price went up and the opposition badly wanted to create a ruckus but they cannot because of corona you cannot uh, call the government anti democratic because government is protecting the precious lives of the citizen uh, citizen so in the name of corona you get uh, everything done with uh, people silently looking after wearing a mask also so that unknowingly even a protest will not come out it is such a beautiful situation for every ruler right from donald trump to narendra modi to pranay vijay this is a good situation to rule but there is no law and order situation have you seen there is no maoist attack there is no explosions no minor theft or something now it has slowly started because you are uh, reducing the uh, um, lockdown condition so people feel free of uh, raping a girl or breaking into somebody's house slowly it starts now but by and large you get a silent and uh, complacent uh, uh, i mean a uh, pliant uh, uh, citizen during this corona period and that is why a lot of changes also taking place uh, which probably they may not announce you will know once this corona period is over i hope it will be over as early as possible it's our hope too sir and in fact california has taken a few steps backwards they have reinforced lockdown no more uh, bars no more restaurant eating no more uh, hair cutting saloon everything has been locked down again and uh, we we have a bit of a challenge on our hands and it's being you know it uh, but i think uh, there are some lessons to be learned that uh, people should be trying to do it on their own one is that your intake of vitamin a and vitamin d capsules these multivitamin tablets are supposed to improve immunity uh, we had actually done this thing with a specialist for reasons unknown youtube pulled down our video anyway that's a matter for a different uh, uh, day and different time as to why that happened sir my uh, question to you is we are well into our discussion now about 50 minutes and this is a very fascinating discussion and viewers you need to uh, start appreciating the kind of intellectual power that vhs team brings forward and it's all thanks to dr subramanian swami because 
India's some of the brightest uh, minds have come together to form this non-political entity called Virat Hindustan Sangam. I am myself a follower of Dr. Subramanian Swami, and I do my little bit in California for the cause. But my request and hope to all those of you who are watching and listening, please join your local Virat Hindustan Sangam because there is amazing stuff happening there. And, and we are almost always at the cutting edge of technology, bringing forth things that will not be discussed in mainstream media and giving a good platform for the viewer, from the, for the specialists to bring forth their ideas. Uh, so Mohanaji, now let's get a little bit more specific about this lady called Swapna. Now I'm hearing, and I could be wrong about this, I'm hearing that NIA caught her in an apartment that was owned by Pinari Vijayan's daughter. Uh, no, that is wrong. There is no evidence surface to this effect. But uh, Swapna was staying some 500 uh, meters away from where Pinarayi Vijayan's daughter is staying. I see. If that means something, then, well, it means something. Uh, their uh, both apartments were uh, 500 meters away, half a kilometer. But uh, there is, uh, as such, there is no reason to suspect that Pranay Vijayan harbored this uh, criminal. There is no direct evidence, or even uh, I am unable to raise his suspicion. Wherever I can suspect, I am having strong grounds for uh, suspecting. I will not suspect uh, whosoever he may be, whether it is Pranay Vijayan or his daughter. Just because somebody was staying in your neighborhood, then you are uh, uh, protecting her, etc. That will be too, I mean, too trivial uh, an argument now. Transfer, thanks for clarifying us uh, that uh, point. Now, this is not a CPIM only situation. Wasn't Swapna also known to many Congress leaders of Kerala? That is what is surprising me. That... Uh, if there is a corruption in Kerala, the share must go to Congress also. In principle, it is, uh, see, uh, a part goes to the opposition, major portion goes to two-thirds to the ruling party, one-third to the opposition. That is the coalition party. dharma. Coalition dharma. Now, uh, during 90s, I know, uh, this uh, bar owners, liquor, the corruption was around 4,500 crores in 95 to 2000 in that five years period. After this 4,500 crores, 1,500 crores will go to the opposition. 3,000 will remain with the ruling party, whosoever it may be, either LDF or UDF. So in this gold smuggling also, the share must go to the opposition. You might be remembering when Lalu Prasad Yadav was uh, doing corruption on this uh, cattle feed. He regularly paid the opposition leader, Congress opposition leader at that time, Jagannath Mishra. You might be remembering. Yes, Bihar yes. Uh, opposition leader. He was chief minister also. Previously, Jagannath Mishra was chief minister and Lalu was uh, opposition leader. So Jagannath Mishra used to pay Lalu. And when Lalu became chief minister, Lalu made money out of cattle feed and paid a share to Jagannath Mishra. Now, finally, one uh, uh, Sarju Rai, you may be knowing him. He is a VHS member also. As a matter of fact, I've had the pleasure of meeting him once. Please continue, sir. Yeah. He was the man who brought all these uh, adjustments and corruption of Lalu Prasad Yadav and Jagannath Mishra. But Mishra, somehow, he was clever. He wriggled out of the case, but uh, Lalu first gave. Yeah. <laughs> this is the fact. So the same thing in Kerala, they share the loot. But uh, uh, what is worrying me is that Congress is demanding a CBI inquiry now, saying that uh, let NIA be there. In addition to that, CBI should come. I don't know why Congress is so interested in CBI. Number two, neither uh, Sonia Gandhi nor Rahul Gandhi nor any national leader of Congress has made any statement, any statement on this issue. Now, it's a very serious issue. You know, it is uh, the one of the biggest uh, 
as told by nia this is the biggest terror funding case in the history of india terror funding so congress must uh, come out and attack cpm but they are keeping silent and they are asking for a cbi inquiry now i have a genuine doubt whether there is uh, some connection between congress and existing cbi uh, top uh, offices i don't know yeah well i i am not going to plug for a certain book by a certain individual which cast its light on this problem that you just mentioned but i can tell you that a certain book written by a certain individual is being translated into malayalam and will be available very soon it will be coming to amazon and you can buy it from there because these days your only choice is i mean one of the better choices is to buy it online so that is on its way i don't want to be blamed of plugging this book so please continue sir no anyway uh, congress is behaving in a strange manner but i am sure that uh, uh, the share of the loot might have gone to congress also they for name sake they ask for uh, if you put cbi inquiry they will ask for nia you put nia they will ask for cbi etc it's all uh, no it's illogical their demands are illogical and uh, they demanded the resignation of the chief minister after bjp raising the demand congress never uh, uh, asked or demanded pinarayi vijayan's resignation in the initial uh, period once bjp raised this demand saying that your office is corrupt mr pinarayi vijayan so naturally you must resign owning the vicarious the moral responsibility you have you could not uh, control your offices uh, their moral side seems to be weak but uh, more than uh, morality the legalities or illegalities which is troubling us so you must resign and congress was silent on resigning uh, for three or four days and then now they have also started uh, demanding the resignation because otherwise they will be accused of uh, colluding with the uh, pinarayi so congress is in a very difficult uh, precarious position in kerala now because everything has come out and directly nia is investigating and you know nia is throwing all sorts of wrong hints so that uh, the media is in the dark politicians are in the dark everybody is in the dark they give a news that swapna is in a uh, town and they arrest her from bangalore and next day they are releasing phone calls of sapna uh, showing that she was in uh, trivandrum at least uh, till 10 10th uh, morning she started for bangalore they have released uh, walayar check post uh, uh, cctv camera detail released through one particular media so what is that nia is doing everybody is uh, Uh, you have to guess what will be there next uh, uh, there is a reason for that i will tell you now the, the people who are under custody of customs they said that we have been doing it for the past several years last year we we did it 10 uh, times and four times during the corona period through diplomatic baggage that means definitely somebody at the top of customs might have helped them now customs commissioner is in a problem he is unable to believe his own offices he doesn't know who has uh, uh, who is related to these people and nia that is why probably the home minister directly ordered nia to take it over because home minister may be doubting even the customs commissioner you don't know. so directly the charge was given to nia now customs has got only supportive role now because it was handed over to nia it is natural for customs to become hyperactive they started acting smart giving more information collecting more information running here and there asking help from tamil nadu asking help from andhra and you know this uh, lady was arrested by andhra branch of nia not by karnataka branch Andhra branch of NIA came to Bangalore and arrested this lady and handed over to Kochi NIA. This is 
this is how they play you know a uh, few years back six uh, maoists uh, having isis link in fact they were is terrorists muslims they were caught in uh, kanur by an ai and you know who helped them delhi police and tamil nadu police kerala police was informed just half an hour ahead of this operation kerala police reached there and a crowd also reached to prevent the arrest a crowd of around 150 people reached there it is at a hill top but still crowd reached there and kerala police helped clearing the crowd by lathi charging and uh, nia took these six people that is how nia operates if they want to operate in kerala they bring delhi police or tamil nadu police they operate in karnataka with uh, andhra section of nia they operate in tamil nadu with kerala section of nia oh, all this uh and i uh, appreciate their techniques because because of the social media and the mainstream media and crooked politicians nowadays uh investigating officers are in trouble that you get a lot of inputs whom to believe whom to disbelieve so now what happened is investigation uh, during the course of investigation they also give all sorts of wrong information misguiding information so that all culprits will be complacent they will be lazy they say that are humko to kon nahi see some sort of hubris develops in uh, this uh, culprit and finally they are caught this is the game which is uh, going on in kerala that is why this unexpected disclosures you know yesterday one another uh, it officer arun balachandran he disclosed that yes i was asked by shiva shankar to arrange a flat for swapna i told the flat owner it is by the big boss so given some discount they are expecting a 30% discount in the rent and finally the deal was done by me and today chief minister removed him from the post for making this revelation he, he wanted to prove his innocence the flat was arranged by me but the order was given by shiva shankar there is nothing wrong in arranging a flat for somebody by putting a phone call but even for that a uh, chief minister removed him in fact he should be appreciated for uh, giving this detail but he is also removed now you don't know uh, uh, now kerala chief minister is running helter skelter to save his skin by uh, asking uh, officers to go on leave suspending them immediately when some news comes he suspends them uh, sometimes even if the news coming nia telling something customs telling something he will not touch the officer that means he is in a panic state but one thing i appreciate in pinarayi vijayan that he know how to maintain his body language in his every day evening he is conducting a press conference and uh, showing that i am confident nobody will touch me and uh, you know two three type of people will have good body language always one thing mad men you cannot make anything out of their body language now uh, people with uh, uh, hubris as i said are kon pakde ga humko they will also have this type of body language and innocent and bold people like dr subramanian swami you will find this uh, confident body language in them also like you and me having now quite often people ask me why do you quote subramanian swami this much But people doesn't understand his background he is in indian politics from 1967 jab ye log paida nahi hue the he is in indian politics you know he took his uh, phd in 1964 and became a professor in harvard university he was uh, uh, ridiculed by indira gandhi as santa claus of indian parliament just for telling that socialism is a bluff it is not going to work in india you open up your market this was swami's idea originally nobody agreed with him professor p c mahanobis who was a ussr stooge and planning commission chairman at that time swami proved him wrong and because of that swami was removed from the job but swami held to that and swami was a member of either rajya sabha or lok sabha for 45 years i would ask the critics of dr swami the so called critics of swami 
How many of you are more than 45 years of age by birth? You are two small people challenging Dr. Swami. And you know, though, he was advocating that this Hindu rate of growth is bullshit. You remove the income tax. You are harassing people. There is tax terrorism in this country, etc. Now, everybody was fascinated by socialism. Even Vajpayee was uh, fascinated by socialism. So that when uh, Janata Party was dissolved and uh, Janasang people formed uh, BJP, Swami was prevented entry. Vajpayee bolted the door from inside. It was opened only in 2013. You know, the way he suffered for the country, he could have settled in the uh, USA. He could have continued as a professor in Harvard. He could have made uh, money, lived a cosy life. But he did not. He came to India. He worked in uh, Delhi University. He was terminated by Indira Gandhi. He was thrown to road along with his family. Nobody was there to take care of him. But still he held to his nationalism. But then uh, now people feel that, uh, who is this Swami? What is his idea? All mad idea. No, you don't understand. <laughs> you, are, you should have asked Narasim Rao. You ask uh, Manmohan Singh now. Narasim Rao is no more. You read Jairam Ramesh's book. Even though he is a congressman, what is that he has written uh, about uh, Dr. Swami? So many people appreciate him. Even Supreme Court appreciate him quite often. Now that is why I depend on him for my inputs, for uh, writing and speaking. I quite often interact with him and get ideas. And that is why I am also bold in saying certain things. Now tell me, sir. So um, I think we digressed from the main topic a little bit, but I yeah. completely 100% uh, support you in your viewpoint. And that's exactly the reason why I follow Dr. Swami. So I think what we are trying to tell people who spit venom on Dr. Swami in social media channels, see if you deserve to say something against someone. He's like the sun, you know, so you have to think you have to have some maturity to badmouth a person of that station. That's all I think we are trying to say. So let's get back to the uh, main topic. And I would like to ask a few questions that our listeners have asked. So are you uh, ready now? One, 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 point. Yeah, please, please. one point I will make. I was not digressing uh, from the discussion by bringing in Dr. Swami because reducing the customs duty. Of yes, that was his idea. Is also, is also an idea of Dr. Swami. In 2019, it was Nirmala Sitaraman who increased the duty from, uh, I think, 34% to 36.5%. In spite of Swami advising, please don't do that, you reduce it. You want to reduce the uh, um, uh, smuggling. You reduce your duty, the smuggling will come down. And you will make money through other sources. It is not that, oh, I'll, what, what will I do for cash? Just like people ask, uh, you abolish income tax, then from where do you get the money? That money will be rotated back to the market. People are not going to eat the money. It's, it's a simple thing which Dr. Swami has been telling. And the after effect now, it is there for you to see. That is why I brought Dr. Swami in, not for digressing the subject. Now, yes, sir. Ask me. The question. Yeah, no, no, it, it, this is uh, it, this is the viewpoint of the viewers, and and we have a very very high dedicated viewership today. Everybody is hanging on to every word that you and I are talking. So thank you very much for making this a very engaging discussion, Char. So let's go into some questions now. Uh, the first question is from Sachin Sharma. He wants to know who appointed Swapna Suresh. How did she get diplomatic access? Now, see, Swapna Suresh was first uh, appointed in Air India SATS, that is a ground handling company of Air India, ground handling contract. She was uh, appointed there. Subsequently, she was appointed in uh, UAE consulate when it was open. It was not there previously. They opened it some three, four years back in Trivandrum. She got appointed there. And from there, she came to a mysterious company called Vision Tech or something. 
and they took a contract from uh, a contractor of that is uh, price water house coopers they are the main contractors of uh, it department and pwc employed vision tech and vision tech employed swapna this is the story which has come out which i at the start of the discussion i assailed it is all fabricated he was direct employee of it department but when caught they changed the record and now they are putting blame on pwc and pwc is you know much maligned company price water house coopers for good and bad they are being blamed so it is no problem they will take this blame also it may be true or false but this is the route how swapna approached the uh, chief minister at this time viewers we are not uh, taking her supposedly uh, non hindu name because we want to be sure of our facts and uh, we discussed this before our hangout and we said that we are not going to address that issue that doesn't mean that she may have been a uh, muslim we don't know that we are not going to talk about that so moving on to the next question venkatesh vasudevan wants to know will justice be pronounced can nia deliver and prove that gold has been smuggled and if so how much no uh, it is proven that gold has been smuggled it is seized and it is uh, in criminal law terms it is material object now so uh, the crime has been uh, established that smuggling has been done now who did that is the question now there is a lower nia court after that there is kerala high court i have some reservation in kerala high court because the standing council of nia i hope uh, people understand standing council means there is a permanent uh, advocate for you in kerala high court he is called standing council now for the state government there is permanent council he is called uh, advocate general in supreme court he is called attorney general who will take care of all your cases along with a solicitor general in supreme court in states it is director general of prosecution so uh, advocate general and director general of prosecution dgp generally people confuse uh, it is director general of police no it is general director general of police uh, prosecution now who is the chief of police he is state police chief spc generally people call him dgp that is an old designation now for the past several years he is spc your lokanath behra is the spc of kerala state police chief now the standing council in high court uh, uh, who belongs to nia nia has appointed their standing council uh, he was appointed during ups time at least from 2012 he is continuing and i have uh, serious reservations not only because uh, he was appointed by upa a government should have uh, should reflect their spirit through their advocates in kerala high court that is one, number 1 number 2 in almost every nia case the case failed in kerala high court you know the professor's hand was chopped and so many people were punished but when it came to high court all the accused which nia caught were released four or five of people who were caught by kerala police the crime branch of kerala police were confirmed punishment by high court now how can it be nia is foolish and uh, kerala police is smarter i have a uh, serious uh, suspicion that when you present the case any prosecutor can dilute the case or make the case stronger that is how the cases are fought now uh, if you are sincere enough you will fight for the case till finished every piece of evidence will be brought in front of the court now if you feel that are is me kuch nahi hai unnecessary police is harassing a man then from within your arguments will not come out the evidence will not come out you will not confront the witnesses you will not question them properly now see all this what is going on around us 
is only media news it has nothing to do with the court all these photographs and video what you see in uh, uh, tv channels is not an evidence at all as far as court is concerned so you have to have actual evidence scientific evidence and witnesses records to be produced in court and argue on that basis so that you win in lower court and high court and even in supreme court also these are big people the case is going to land up in supreme court now my apprehension is that after 5 or 6 years you will see a small column of uh, news saying that trivandrum smuggling case all accused acquitted by kerala high court now who will be responsible i have been telling all my friends like what is happening i have nothing personal against that advocate but a government should reflect their mindset you know the cbi advocate was not changed for uh, almost uh, for uh, four years for uh, six years he was not changed even after modi coming to power the up appointee was continuing till two years back now once they put their own advocate he started fighting for his government it is the prestige of the government the cbi is a premier investigating agency now that was the first time high court uh, asked for a cbi investigation against cpm where cpm was the culprit high court had to order a cbi inquiry of course the division bench cancelled it that is another part of that but then at least you have an advocate who reflects the nationalist mind i will not say that uh, this high court advocate is anti national but reflecting the mood of the government is important why we are changing attorney general when the government changes in supreme court you change attorney general you change solicitor general all are advocates can you imagine modi appointing uh, uh, kapil sibal as attorney general Kapil Sibal is a famous advocate, knowing everything, every trick of the trade he knows. He is highly knowledgeable. But you will not, Modi will not appoint Kapil Sibal or Abhishek Manu Singhvi as his solicitor general or uh, attorney general. He will appoint either Harish Salve or uh, President B K K Venugopal. So this is the principle. Be you know when uh, in 2004 Vajpayee was defeated and U P A came. within 24 hours within 24 hours they changed every advocate in every high court you have 28 high courts and around 150 standing councils of various companies everything cbic have a standing council uh, indian oil corporation have uh, then bharat petroleum have then all your hrd department law department uh, um, irrigation department this department that department everything is handled by one advocate so putting together around 150 or 160 advocates in kerala more than 200 in karnataka around 200 in tamil nadu all these advocates were changed within 24 hours when upa came came to power the moment manmohan singh was sworn in the next thing they did was to remove all vajpayee's uh, advocates and putting their advocate nothing wrong in that i am not blaming them but uh, our government uh, did not do that extraordinary they did it in places extraordinary and you know I, i don't mind you are putting an advocate uh, appointed by upa on behalf for uh, national highways or some something like that or even cbsc or some central university all you need an advocate you put there but nia is something very serious it involves uh, national security and when congress and cpm are chums in kerala which everybody know there are no proof is needed and you are putting a congressman you are uh, as your advocate is at the least i will say it is inappropriate i am not casting any aspersions on that gentleman uh, thank you for that very detailed and uh, illuminating answer um the next question is from ranjit why are businessmen appointed as honorary consul prominent kerala businessman joseph roy of confident group is honorary consul of slovakia 
I have no idea about that, how they, uh, their appointment is made. I think only foreign ministry can uh, explain that. I have no knowledge whatsoever about that. Um, there is a question from Baiju. He says, some of the TV journalists are also involved in smuggling. And, um, and he also says that, is it possible that Mr. Uh, Jalil, who is a minister, is directly in, uh, involved with Patna? What are your thoughts on that? No, uh, I will not say that. Uh, see, there is no evidence to say that he is directly involved. But uh, in the fitness of things, he should not have spoken to Sapna. Sapna was an official in uh, the consulate. But you are a cabinet minister of Kerala. You are an officer on special duty or your private secretary can see. And you know, for what purpose he was speaking? Uh, getting some uh, food kits, food packets to be distributed in his constituency. Have Kerala become so poor that you go and beg in front of a UAE consulate to give food to your, your own people, getting food packets? He says, no, it was uh, uh, technically it was not food. It was uh, grapes and uh, something, some fruit from Arabia. Anyway, whatever it is. Well, don't you think I'm ashamed to go and beg in front of UAE for giving uh, whatever uh, uh, food to your people? He did that. And in every packet, there is uh, uh, with love from UAE. So that people start loving UAE back, not loving Kerala. I don't know what foolish thing he did. And for that purpose, he spoke with Swapna. Now he says that what is wrong if I speak to Swapna? Nothing wrong, but it is unbecoming. It may not be illegal, but it is unbecoming of a minister. And he is minister for higher education. What sort of uh, example he is putting forth? And you remember, he was previously working in SIMI, Students Islamic Movement of India. Uh, it was banned by uh, UPA government themselves. And the ban is still continuing. He dissociated from uh, SIMI and started working independently, made an equation with the CPM. And he has a, his own constituency, wherein only he will win. Uh, he nurtured a con constituency, and he is a VIP now. And he did this nonsense, and justifying it. What a thick skin you see. Well, um, there is a popular notion that it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which coalition is in power in Kerala. It's the Muslims who run the state. I could be wrong about this. This is a popular conception that people in the know say that that's what is running this uh, God's own country. And, and I will just leave it at that. I'll go to the next question, sir. Is this current scam also reflective of an attempt by uh, Vijayan's detractors to unseat him within his own party? This question is asked by, one second, uh, this Raghavendra. Ah, look, Mr. Raghavendra. As such, there is no rebellion against Pinarayi Vijayan. He is the unquestionable Stalin of Kerala Communist Party. Nobody will question him at this stage because his uh, tentacles have gone so far that any any thought of rebellion will be crushed. You, you remember an incident when uh, Khrushchev was uh, in power. When he came to power, he started criticizing Stalin in the party conference. He said, oh, Stalin killed this man, killed that man, did this, did that, etc. He was so cruel. Then somebody from the audience asked him, why you were silent at that time? You were there along with Stalin. Then Khrushchev immediately thumbed his desk and asked, who is that man? Ask me the question. Please stand up. Nobody was standing up. Nobody dared to stand up. The questioner went silent. And Khrushchev added, this is why I was silent during Stalin's time. Because it is so powerful. You don't understand huh, the dynamics of Communist Party. They speak too much about the democracy outside. But inside, you will be manhandled if you speak about against uh, Pidrai Vijayan. 
so there is absolutely no reward now but once pidarai vijayan is called for questioning by nai then the rift may start that also i will say may start because the people uh, who are supposed to be challengers of pinarayi are older than pinarayi either they are sick or older so it is very difficult physically see you need tremendous energy to create a coup inside the party not a small thing so you need tremendous energy now these uh, two or three people i have in my mind they are either sick or have become old so i don't find any threat from within good uh, answer sir um, the next question is from asha agarwal she wants to know what does bjp need to do to do well in 2021 elections ha huh. now one thing is there bjp is known as a hindu party bjp uh, should be proudly owning up that uh, badge on their sleeves they should not be apologetic aapko kyu sharam lagta hai ki koi aapko hindu party bolte hain aur are nahi 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 main secular hu it's not required you boldly say yes i am a hindu party what is wrong in that only hindus can include everybody no other uh, no other religion in the world can include everybody loka samasta sukhino bhav you don't have such type of shloka or line nowhere in the world not even jesus christ or church says that everybody will be taken to heaven no they will take uh, only christians to heaven you want to come to heaven welcome but you first convert to christian see this message has to strongly go now you see they have taken over 51 temples in uttarakhand now how how do you justify this uh, taking over with the odis i don't mind uh, a bjp government taking over temple but make convincing statement this is the reason why we are taking over and this taking over is for certain such period we will give back so you know vaishnav devi temple was with some trustees and there was there was all sorts of mismanagement when jagmohan became the governor of uh, kashmir he took over the temple set right everything and the ropeway now you see in vaishnav devi was constructed by him the steps leading to vaishnav devi was uh, made by marble by uh, jagmo he vacated all the uh, dirty people from that area it is not that uh, they ran away he gave them decent uh, accommodation decent building so that the atmosphere becomes divine ya pehle to kuch to kachra pada kahin par कोई पांडा आता है जाता है लोगों को लूटता है यहां पैसा डालो वहां पैसा डालो यू नो वेन पांडा गो मैट दे एक्ट डू ऑल इलियोजिकल थिंग्स विच ही स्टॉप सो इन प्रिंसिपल यू वॉन्ट टू रेक्टिफाई सम डिफेक्ट यू टेक ओवर द टेम्पल प्लीज टेक ओवर रेक्टिफाई द डिफेक्ट एंड हैंड इट ओवर बैक नाउ उत्तराखंड गवर्नमेंट इज साइलेंट इवन इन द कोर्ट दे डोंट हैव एनी आर्ग्यूमेंट i was following that case dr swami presented in case uttarakhand government says that no we are planning but uh, that will all depend on the judgments which is going to be delivered by this court etc central government advocate he appeared and said we are not a party to this we have no interest in this case at all and bjp how do you justify this in at least in next during next elections you have to face hindus also it will be difficult for you to justify such actions now coming to kerala bjp i i have no hesitation to say that kerala bjp is also trying to be too secular you be a good strong hindu party and try making alliance with muslim league i don't mind because you had alliance with pdp in kashmir for some time it failed that is another thing but there is nothing wrong in aligning with a muslim party after all whatever said and done muslim league is the soft face of islam in kerala they have business interests number of fanatics are very less in muslim there are 
but not everyone so in my wild suggestion i am saying i don't mind you are uh, making an alliance with muslim league but you be a hindu party then only even muslim league will recognize you there has to be an identity for a person for an organization for a political party yes so indeed uh, mix that identity yes so indeed sir you are you uh, yes sir no no go ahead please continue i'm sorry i thought you were done please go ahead ah yeah so what i suggest is bjp must own up boldly saying that we are a hindu party and there is nothing wrong to be a hindu party and uh, do see uh, always speaking about religion is not good also and bjp doesn't do that bjp enters into all uh, arena now bjp's limitation in kerala is that there are two strong coalitions uh, ldf and udf i would request my colleagues in uh, bjp to read uh, panchatantra the first story in panchatantra the first story is related to mitra bheda how to how, how to separate uh, the front there are uh, uh, they are, uh, udf they have a fraternity ldf is a fraternity how to break it centuries back vishnu sharma has given you the required advice how to do mitra bheda so either ldf or udf you have to split it into splinter groups and the advantage will be towards bjp so these two three things fundamentally bjp has to do i think they are almost uh, in this direction i am not blaming them uh, saying that they are direction they are going in the right direction with the new process i hope them uh, well thank you sir uh, viewers uh, we have about one and a half hours into the program and we need to wind it down i'd love for uh, mohandas ji to keep talking uh, and listening uh, this is this is out of the world debate here uh, uh, listening to him a wealth of experience so we are not taking any more questions i have a few more questions to ask of you sir but i'm just telling our viewers we have stopped taking questions thank you for your support please hang around we are going to finish up in the next few minutes as soon as we have three more questions left and with that we will wind up the show so next question sir is from rangarajan ekambara should nia appoint another lawyer can they do that now uh, they can do that they can do that what i uh, understand from nia is that i raised this uh, issue through twitter and uh, what i understand from nia is that they are going to bring some senior lawyers from delhi to appear for them but uh, still i i sent a word through them indirectly we didn't speak directly indirectly i gave a reply that i am happy that you are bringing lawyers from delhi but that lawyer will be briefed by this existing lawyer if uh, delhi lawyer after coming to kerala who will uh, give in the file and brief him about this is what happened this is the sequence of events etc is to be taught to that advocate now na officer can partially do that but a na officer is not a legal officer they may raise so many issues that the need not necessarily be legal issue so you need a good advocate so my request to na is please bring a advocate from delhi or calcutta wherever you want but change your kerala advocate because he is going to play a very crucial role role in uh, lower court as well as high court um thank you sir a next question is from vijish vijayan is there any possibility of involvement of the sons of kodiyeri balakrishnan in this <laughs> yeah that is uh, they are usual suspects <laughs> i will not go by that uh, uh, logic so whatever happen whatever corruption is in india it is connected to which in the varam etc Uh, these are all uh, speculation as such uh, there is no reason to believe that they are involved in this case next question from ranjit can bjp come to power in kerala by bringing nss and sndp together oh yeah uh, definitely it is uh, possible you will make a big headway but there are a uh, lot of impediments to bring them together and not only bring them together 
they must come with you also after aligning each other they must come with you uh, lot of ground work is to be done which was uh, tried several times but sometimes it fails it has not yet succeeded that experiment has not yet succeeded um, last question for today mr k subramaniam wants to know is the current smuggling an ice uh, tip of the iceberg of the nexus among african gold uae based nris isi terror funding greedy islamic and communist leaders in kerala it's a little long but you understand the source is in uh, africa i understand i understand, I understand. it is uh, uh, it is subramaniam asking yes uh so mr subramaniam it is quite possible the the scenario which you are envisaging is quite possible because how this gold is flowing there is uh, there is an ngo in uh, canada impact uh, they regularly conduct studies of on the flow of gold in the world in fact they declared that india is the biggest hub of uh, flow of the gold in the world gold is flowing as uh, mr ayer uh, in the start said it's coming from uh, african countries uh, the raw material is coming to gulf countries it is sometimes fully refined sometimes semi refined sometimes 22 carat sometimes 24 carat and through various methods it is being smuggled now uh, they said this ngo i think i remember their name as impact now impact says that totally there are 1000 tons of gold annually it is coming to india part of that is consumed part of that is re exported out of that 250 tons are smuggled 750 is uh, accounted this is their um, their formula what they have said so roughly if we go by that this route the african country which is affected by not only isis another cruel party that is boko haram boko, boko haram is in african countries and gulf countries especially qatar is very highly fundamentalist all this useful khardavi etc muslim brotherhood they stay there and their proximity to syria and uh, other places and uh, their soft attitude towards pakistan and uh, uh, my problem is uae was not like that uae and saudi arabia was not like that but slowly i think uh, uh, somebody is playing there because uae now says that we are blissfully unaware of what is happening with this uh, diplomatic baggage we didn't send any bag at all so that means uae attache have cheated uae government themselves this is a very serious thing so this uh, tentacles this connections this complicated uh, labyrinth which is explained by uh, subramanian that scenario is uh, quite possible according to me sir this was one of the best uh, hangouts we have had in pivurus i will unab- unabashedly admit that because the amount of information that was uh, shared is mind boggling for those of you who had a chance to see the entirety uh, thanks for staying with us please do subscribe to our channel and also donate to our cause because we are doing this purely out of our interest for our nation for me it's my janma bhumi for uh, mohandas ji it is a janma bhumi and the karma bhumi and uh, thank you so much mohandas ji one more time it took a lot of preparation to do this thing together and uh, we'll be back with more such engaging discussions because this is just wow. starting <laughs> if you want to say something sir please go yeah uh, i would say that uh, i have become too old that i speak non stop from uh, <laughs> my memory is uh, flowing which is quite boring for uh, people i uh, i must admit that you could have interrupted me when i started uh, speaking about khrushchev and uh, or nigerian transport minister sir these are all maybe good historical uh, examples but they were not required in a quick discussion we could have done this discussion probably in 
half an hour or 40 minutes i think i dragged it for which i apologize to the viewers you know um if you think about the number of books somebody would have to read to get the same knowledge that you did even though you may have taken a little bit of a detour here and there just a sizable number so you are giving imparting the wisdom of having read and reflected about these things and i think that's a good thing i think people you know come to us to listen to something that is not written that is not heard on the today's media you may want to google for it but you will not be able to connect the dots the way we are able to do because for us growing up books were our only way to acquire the knowledge outside of what's hap- what was happening in india so thank you very, very much one more time on that thing namaskaram and hope to